Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Kelly. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing y'all how to make my homemade fish and grits. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. Now, this dish consists of creamy and cheesy grits. We top it with two blackened catfish fillets and a delicious and flavorful fish sauce, which I make from scratch as well. Um, this recipe serves about four to six people. It's absolutely delicious. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, here's all what y'all gonna need to make y'all homemade fish and grits. Let's get started with our ingredients. You'll need one pound of catfish, one pound of trout. Now this is fish with the bones in it, so you're gonna need that. Along with that, you're gonna need some grits. It could be the quick five minute or the 30 minute version, doesn't really matter. You also need some all purpose flour, salted butter, whole milk, and extra sharp cheddar cheese. Now these two ingredients are optional. If you don't want to use them, you don't have to. You will also need some uh, salt, pepper, Tony Sacheray's Creole seasoning, Chef Paul Padum's seafood, and black and redfish magic. I'll have the link to where you can purchase these in the description box. And for your additional seasonings, you will need some green onions, some celery, garlic, and a lemon, any size. And there we have it. All right, let's get straight to it. So we're gonna get started by chopping up the green onions. So we're gonna chop the ends first. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, rinse off our celery. Now we're just gonna chop this. Just chop it like this as you see right here. All right, here I have uh, three cloves of garlic. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and just uh, quarter them. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this lemon and I'm gonna just cut it in half. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shred the extra sharp cheddar cheese. Now it could be any amount that you wanna use or you could omit the cheese completely from the recipe. And this is how it looks when we're done. Uh, shredded about uh, four ounces of this. Okay, we transferred our trout fillets onto this 11 by 17 inch baking pan. Now we're just going to uh, sprinkle a little bit of the Tony Sacheray's Creole seasoning onto both sides of the fillets. You're also going to sprinkle some Chef Paul Coudon's Seafood Magic onto both sides of the fillets. All right, we transferred our catfish fillets onto this 11 by 17 inch baking pan. I have six uh, fillets here. You can decrease it to four if you like. So let's add a little bit of seasoning. So we're gonna lightly, lightly sprinkle some Tony Sacheray's Creole seasoning onto both sides of the catfish fillets. And now we're going to sprinkle the uh, Chef Paul Poudon's black and red fish magic. Now, if you don't have this, you can use the uh, Chef Paul Padon's seafood magic. And if you don't have that, just uh, use all Tony Sacheray's, okay? And we're gonna sprinkle this onto both sides of the catfish fillets. Now, if you want to uh, squeeze a half a lemon onto your catfish, you can do so. Just add a, squeeze a little bit. Preach your fire to medium high heat. All right, so in this large saucepan, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of salted butter. Just spread that around. I'm gonna let that melt. Now I'm gonna add the trout fillets. Let the fish fry for about one to two minutes on each side. Don't worry if the trout fillets stick. Just uh, flip them over to the other side the best way you can. Now, if you notice that your trout is sticking to your saucepan, just take your spatula and just guide it along the bottom and you'll be good to go. Now, let's go ahead and add some seasoning. We're gonna add two third cup of our chopped green onions, two third cup of our chopped celery, and our three cloves of garlic that we quartered. Now we're gonna go ahead and give this a quick stir. And we're gonna let this saute for about five minutes. 
You will notice that your mixture is starting to stick at the bottom of your saucepan. Just take your spoon and just glide it along the bottom and you'll be good to go, okay? Now we're going to go ahead and add five and a half cups of water. Now go ahead and give that a quick stir. And again, as you're stirring it, just take your spoon and glide it along the bottom to get all that brown stuff. That's nothing but good flavor right there. All right, now let's go ahead and add some seasoning. So we're gonna sprinkle about a half or one teaspoon of salt. And to that, we're gonna add about one fourth teaspoon of black pepper. Now you wanna be careful with the seasonings because we're cooking this mixture down, so we don't want it to be too concentrated or too overly seasoned. All right, so we're gonna give this a quick stir. All right, here I have a half a lemon, I have a mesh strainer. We're gonna squeeze about one tablespoon of lemon juice in here. Now, also, if you like, if you have some white wine, you could add about a tablespoon of that in here if you like. If you like a little white wine, you could do that as well. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a quick stir. Now, if you think that the lemon is not suitable for your taste, then you can omit it, okay? You don't have to add the lemon if you don't want to. Now we're going to go ahead and cover this and what we want to do is we're going to uh, let this mixture cook all the way down and I'll let y'all know the uh, simmering time once it's done. Okay, let's check on our fish stock. Now let this simmer for about 30 minutes and as you can see the mixture has cooked down. That's exactly what we're looking for. Turn your fire off. Now we're going to add our fish mixture into this mesh strainer with a medium sized bowl underneath it. Make sure you take a spoon and just press the fish mixture down to release all of the juices. Now you can go ahead and take this mixture. You'll have to sort through it to remove all the bones. And then from there you can add some boiled eggs with some mayonnaise, mustard, relish, and some seasonings and you got some bread to go along with it from there you can make some homemade tuna fish sandwiches how about that and there we have it homemade fish stock from scratch now you want to um you can make this about a day ahead of time so that way the flavors can settle and increase overnight and you can make your uh your sauce the next day and i have about two and a half cups of fish stock in here okay preheat your fire to medium high heat all right, so in this large saucepan, we're gonna add two tablespoons of salted butter. Just spread that around. And I'm gonna just let that melt. All right, and to that, we're gonna add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And I'm gonna just take my uh, wooden spatula and I'm just gonna stir this. Now you're gonna stir this continuously for about three to four minutes or until the mixture reaches a brown color like how you see here look at that all right now we're going to go ahead and add our fish stock now we're going to give that a quick stir now we're going to cover this and we're just going to let this simmer until the mixture becomes nice and thick and you want to make sure that you stir this occasionally I'm going to let y'all know the cooking time once it's done. Alright y'all, let's check on our fish sauce. I let this cook for about uh, 15 minutes. And your mixture should be slightly thick. And it will get thicker as it cools. Okay. And remember, uh, cooking times vary. So you want to keep all that in mind. That looks good. Turn your fire off. Preheat your fire to medium high heat. All right, so in our cast iron skillet, we're just gonna lightly coat it with some butter. I'm gonna let that get hot for about one to two minutes. Now you wanna make sure that you have your ventilation system and all that turned on because it's gonna get quite smoky. Now we're going to add our catfish fillet into the skillet. We're gonna let this fry for about two to three minutes on each side. 
All right, our catfish is done. As you can see, that's a nice golden brown on both sides. Yes, yes, yes. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove this out of the skillet. Turn your fire off. And place it onto our serving dish. Now you're going to let this cool for about five minutes and then from there you can add it onto your grits and serve. Preheat your fire to medium high heat. All right, now let's get started with making our grits. So in this medium sized pot, we're going to add two and one half cups of water, two cups of whole milk. If you're adding all of the same ingredient, whether it's all water or all milk, you're going to add four and one half cups. Of that okay either the, all of the water or the milk and to that we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt add that in there. and lastly we're going to add one cup of grits i'm just going to give this a quick stir now if you're using like the stone ground grits that take about 30 to 40 minutes then you want to follow the instructions given on the package of those grits because it could take more or less time. Now we're going to let this come to a simmer. Then we're going to let it simmer for a few minutes until it thickens. All right, y'all. It's been about six to eight minutes now. And our grits are done. Right, that looks good. Turn your fire off. All right, now that we've turned our fire off, we're going to add five tablespoons of salted butter. Now, if you're a big butter person, you can eat Increase that to one full stick of butter in there if you like, but you know, I want an equal balance of butter in my grits. So uh, once the butter melts, we're gonna give it a quick stir. All right, now that our butter is melted, now we're gonna go ahead and give it a quick stir. Now, if you have any issues with your grits coming out too thick or anything like that, you could just add more water or more milk as needed. Don't add too much now, about one fourth cup or something like that. All right, now that our grits are nice and cool, now we're gonna add one and one half cups of our shredded extra sharp cheddar cheese. You can increase that to two cups if you like a lot of cheese. I'm just gonna give that a quick stir. And we're just gonna stir this until that cheese has completely melted. Um, into the grits and our cheese has completely melted into our grits and they are done and here is the final presentation and there y'all have it ladies and gentlemen homemade fish and grits made by a New Orleans native Go taste the flavors of all those seasonings and cheese grits oh my goodness and that fish flavor mm. wonderful it's just well balanced delicious y'all oh my goodness so good recipe a try hey y'all i hope you enjoyed the video if you like my channel hit the subscribe button hit the bell button if you want to be notified of my videos I have an official website for all of my recipes, including this fabulous fish and grits recipe. You can go to www.charliecookandrews.com. I'm also on Facebook and on Instagram under the name Charlie Cook Andrews. So until next time, take care and I hope you all have a great day. Peace.